Okay. Yeah, Dorothy. Oops. We're we're now recording, uh, Rebecca. <laughs> right. I just lost. Uh, there you are. Yeah. Somehow I just lost things. Um, Dorothy will not be able to make it, so I do call the meeting to order. First order of business is the minutes from the last meeting. Does anybody have any comments to make on them? I was not present at the last meeting, so I I can't correct the minutes. I may have made comments three months ago. <laughs> so I can't actually call for a vote to accept because there's on, only two of us that are able to, are voting members. So hmm. passing on to yep. uh, I, I'm, I'm acknowledging what you said. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Wait, isn't okay. isn't Richard a voting member? But yeah, but I am. But he wasn't here at the last. Meeting. Oh, he wasn't. Oh, okay. So he. Right. Yeah. Okay. On to action items still pending. Fiscal support for projects on hold. Uh, at, as of the last meeting, Jose, you had a plan in mind. Has that been accepted by the village, by the by council? The the we're talking about the analysis of the building um, and uh, the building systems. So we don't we don't need to take it to council. We do. No, I'm I'm talking about the the budget with the the eight thousand dollars for maintenance. Yes, yes, the budget for maintenance of the libraries was approved, and that was approved through the through the appropriations process for the year. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So and on with that, the the item number one and number three are related. Uh -huh. uh, so we do have an approved budget for maintenance of the of the library. Part of that budget, we're looking to create a maintenance uh, management, a property maintenance management plan. Um, and we're going to, we found, uh, we're doing something uh, neat with how we're approaching that. Instead of hiring the engineer to do all the assessments as had been proposed a couple of years ago, we're going to follow a process that we use for loss in place. Um, when we did the inspection of Lawson Place Apartment. I don't know if you all know that we bought Lawson Place Apartments. So we had the building inspected and repairs identify as part of that inspection. And so we got a conditions report as part of our inspection. So we're hmm. gonna do we're gonna do a similar tool or assessment for the library. It'd be an inspection report with a condition assessment and that it puts an age on the on the systems, windows, uh, HVACs, plumbing. And so it creates, it's, a, it, it's an easy way for us to create a maintenance plan uh, through that inspection report. So it is uh, economically feasible uh, to do that. And that's what we'll do um, by the next uh, library commission meeting. Wonderful. Do you know who will be doing that inspection, Mark? Um, we we used uh, David Roach's uh, a company for Lost in Place Apartment, so we'll, we like that buyer's inspection company. So we'll we'll probably use them again for this property. Okay. And uh, you know, Lost in Place is a commercial inspection, and David Roach's uh, company did that. So, do you know Dave? Okay. You, you know David Roach. Right? I I know him. I've I've overlapped with him two or three times, different different ways. Yeah. Okay. Do you any any thoughts or uh, on hiring David and that company? We don't need to do a bidding. I, I don't. I don't start. have any direct feedback on from from anybody that he's worked for. I just know he's been in that business for quite some time and see and seems very knowledgeable about mm -hmm. about it. Um, I I certainly don't know any reason not to hire him. Gotcha, gotcha. And we didn't use, we didn't, David didn't do our commercial inspection for Lost in Place. One of his colleagues did, uh, but they were very mm -hmm. thorough. And we were happy with what, with what we got. So from, um, from a property owner and a buyer's perspective, they did, they did a good job and very thorough job. Now was, was that particular item part of the appropriations or is it a separate thing now? 
the it's a, it's the money is in the budget when the money the budget gets approved it gets approved with with estimates on uh, what we anticipate the needing for that department or that property uh so we have the funding in there and if we need to we have funding in my budget and the administration's budget um to pay for the assessment okay mm -hmm. um item two the water ice on the north end we it looks like it'll get a you'll need the, it looks like it'll get a real workout thursday or so right and we've done a couple of things over the last three months we have been monitoring it during rain events and we um i had i had the team scheduled to raise the um the capture the capturing device for the spout if you if you've been out there there's a gap and the water was overflowing to the side um, I had the team uh, fully connect the 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 mm. bounce spout uh, into the into the storm water system. So we should have less of that overflow to the side. I think what we're going to see um, for this this uh, rain event and oh, probably future big rain events is that there's a design challenge in the roof line that when you get yeah. a lot of water at once, it overflows the gutter system and falls over to the side. And exactly. that is a very difficult challenge to address without a whole redesign or up, upgrading the capacity of the gutter system. <laughs> so I think, I think that's just one of those things that, you know, we're just gonna have to have to deal, uh, live with. Richard, do you have any thoughts on that? I know you've been on oh, that. Oh, I, yeah, it, uh, I think that, that just that, section of gutter that that catches what comes off the roof could be enlarged but it would also probably need to also enlarge the downspout that came right. down mm -hmm. um, I, I think it it the, there's two things that you know it's all right if if on any water system like this it overflows once in a while if it does it regularly it causes too many problems it, you know it's soaking the brick on the end of the the wall, it's it's eroding the soil, it's doing all those things. You know, if, if it's once every few years that we have a storm where, you know, there's some extra runoff, I, I think we can probably live with it. But that's what we have to pay attention to is just how, how frequently it's occurring. Right, right. And so we, we were also monitoring the overflow of water um, over to the sidewalk there. I did a couple visits. I, I did a visit with Johnny once and we didn't see the soil erosion over the sidewalk. So um, to me, that was an indicator we didn't have significant water overflowing on that side that was eroding the soil. Tracy, I don't know if you've, if you've noticed um, any, any issues. I haven't noticed any issues. Mm -hmm. you know, um, there doesn't, um, there's nothing unusual regarding the soil or the, the grass in that area that I've noticed. Mm -hmm. I looked at that area. We, we may not, we're not getting the, the runoff, I think, that we used to. I think it's definitely improved, but there's still a little layer of, of dirt and, and whatever on the sidewalk. And my gut feeling right now is if we've stopped the, the big source, that the, we, we went back and forth about whether it was important for people to be able to walk from the sidewalk around that end of the building. Mm -hmm. um, I can't, I really don't see that that's an important route to maintain, but that's something to be discussed. But if it's not an important route, I think that the retaining wall that's there should be extended out, but start stepping down to, to the edge of the library property so that behind it can be filled in to the point that whatever runoff comes in that direction just you know gradually follows the, the grade which is to the north rather right. than washing out right. the sidewalk mm -hmm. and i think you know as long as we don't have more more rain than what you know more than if the roof isn't overflowing then it should be able to, to handle that but as long as we've got that steep slope there it's going to be hard to get vegetation established, especially if people keep walking through there. So that yeah, the alternative, I guess, would be to put steps in or something. I right. and, and I agree. And and um, 
Carl and I spoke about, uh, briefly about this at the end of last year that there, we're going to look at an economical way to maybe put in some steps. Maybe it'll be like a, like you use on, on garden beds using the wood, the wood pieces to sort of layer, layer that, that, um, that grade. And that, I think that would help solve the two issues. One is just the slow erosion of that topsoil and, 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 and it getting muddy with rain and people walking through it and to make it a little safer for all the people that, that use that as a route to get to the back of the library, get to the alley or wherever there's going. I, I wouldn't build out the, the retaining wall um, because obviously some people use it. You see the foot pattern. And I don't know that we wanna, we wanna, I don't know that there's enough of concern on that footpath to wanna change it or. Well, that, as I say, that's the question. If, yeah. if, it's, if it's not desirable to have it be a traffic route, then I would go with the retaining wall. If it yeah. is desirable, then yes, it would be designing an appropriate set of steps that would be designed in such a way that, that, that it stopped the erosion. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thought about the erosion, it, I don't know to what degree this would can make a difference, but it looks like there's been so much runoff, all the topsoil is gone and it's just down the rocks and clay. Does it right. make sense to invest in topsoil to try to grow grass there uh, if possible and help, you know, strengthen the, the soil that way? You could, Kevin, but you would have to keep people off of it for a year okay. for all that to get well enough established that it could then withstand the, the traffic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's still pretty steep, you know, just just for a for a grassy surface. And if and it's in the shade is the other is the right. other problem. Right. Yeah. Well it gets plenty of water. <laughs> <laughs> or it used now to the, it used to. Now the fourth item is kind of a lie. The possibility of a uh, of the what was it? Oh, the rain garden. The rain garden, right? Mm -hmm. Has yeah, there we, been any further discussion about that? The, Tracy, the um, well, Piper, is that how you pronounce her first name? Mm -hmm. I think it's Piper. Um, she contacted me um, by email before the end of last year. And um, I don't know, we've been emailing each other back and forth, but the latest email that I received from her, she said that she's still collecting information for her report. And she hopes to meet with Carl and I later this month. Um, but um, nothing really concrete or definitive um, regarding the results of her report. She hasn't shared that information yet. And she also said that, um, I guess she's not sure if she will continue to work in this position um, later this year. Is that correct, Josue? Yes, that, that is correct. We, the, her contract, um, was extended through uh, January 31st to complete the report. Um, okay. I have, I'm in receipt of the report and we will do our edits to that report. We have a couple of things that um, we need to factually correct. Uh, so, okay. and then repackage for the final report. So as a stand, um, her, her contract has expired. I know that okay. there's some interest from the environmental commission uh, and and some members of council to mm -hmm. look for the next step in this project. Um, okay. I think there's going to be a lot of conversations around that. From the budget process, council did um, authorize uh, putting in the budget an expense for additional work around climate action and sustainability, uh, okay. and but that's yet to be defined. It, and, it hasn't been defined as to what is the next step in the in the process. The, okay. On the rain gardens, I know we went back and forth on the feasibility of rain gardens at the library. Mm -hmm. um, one of the one of the issues, um, sort of midway through the pro process, was that the what I had presented as a problem 
um, Piper and her interviews with people, um, she had made a determination that that was not an issue, that there was not significant water runoff um, mm -hmm. to justify a rain garden. Mm -hmm. um, and so that sort of stalled the project a bit. Um, ultimately, I think, I think she came around or, or some the group came around that the, there was a possibility for a rain garden at that site and there was um, a percolation test conducted at the site. So I think if, if she's reached out to you uh, near the last part of the year, then there was some interest to doing not necessarily a full blown on rain garden, but there's some smaller scale garden, water retention garden that could be done at the site. Um, I personally would have loved to have seen a, a garden, a rain garden at the at the library because I think it would be complementary to the pollinator gardens uh, that mm -hmm. are on the grounds. Um, I think it's a great educational tool, especially as we're gearing towards dealing with stormwater uh, issues in the village. Uh, a major problem of our sanitary flows was due to in infiltration and inflow from stormwater. Uh, so I want to encourage our, our community to do better about dealing with their own displacement of stormwater on their property and having a rain, a rain garden um, at a, such a vis visible location just makes it so, so tangible for our residents to see something action and, and be inspired. They can see something and say, oh, I could do that in my, on my house. So, so the, for those reasons, personally, and, and in my role as, as the manager looking to address stormwater issues, I found it as a, as a priority area to be able to execute a rain garden. So independent of Piper, I still wanna see, mm -hmm. you know, I, I will be supportive of any and all initiatives that would help uh, deliver uh, water retention features at the library. Okay, so that would be a project for someone else to execute at a later right. time. Right, and one of the other challenges I, I, I learned of that the it was difficult finding volunteers to maintain the pollinator gardens. So is that is that true, Tracy? Well, a a member, a community member actually approached me. He's interested in maintaining the gardens, and um, he said he'd like to talk with um, those who are involved in establishing the garden. Now, the problem with that is that um, I know uh, Therese de Simeo, she was a master gardener and she was also a librarian and she's no longer working at the library. She's living in another state. Mm. Um, so all of those, you know, he, I could um, have him connect with Connie Collette. Maybe she could give him some more infor information. Um, but the other people involved with, with actually, uh, who are involved with establishing the garden no longer live in the area. Yeah, so it's hard to, to sustain them with, with the right. tradition. So, well, if there's anything I can do to help Tracy with, with that individual who wants to take that project over, I'll happily support them and, and uh, keep, in, keep in maintaining those gardens. They're beautiful gardens and we want to encourage them. Right. Mm -hmm. And Becky, I think the Yellow Springs Library Association will pay for gardening supplies and tools. I think that yes. was mentioned during the last last board meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the only what we will not pay for is hiring somebody because that would in, involve us as employer, which we are not in a position to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I thought that there was someone, in, uh, someone that, uh, you know, someone who handles maintenance, ground maintenance. Um, in fact, I know they said this, uh, but this, this is back in the summer. I guess they, they're with Green County Library, and they came over and did some flower bedding work. I mean, could we, uh, and they seemed eager to do it. And uh, could we ask them to maybe lend a hand? Are you talking about Ted Doggett, the um, maintenance manager? Yeah, well, he really. Uh, yes, yeah. I think. So. I'm sorry. Yeah, he really doesn't have time to focus on that 
project, he would rather that someone else take that over. And um, he also mentioned that he's willing to pay for any supplies and tools that um, whoever volunteers to take that project on would need. Okay, okay, got you. Understood, thanks. Sure. Now no, we need, just, need that driven, passionate person to right. get their hands dirty. Yeah. We also not only have the pollinator garden, but we have the edible food garden too. Is is that one being has a has a benefactor? That well, has the, the tree committee. You're talking about the one on 68 down further down or no 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 no, no we're talking at the library at the, library. At the yep. entrance to the parking lot from we're Davis back. Street. Gotcha. There's a there's another garden that was created. We we cleared out the existing vegetation, almost all of it, and then it was replanted in 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 plants, most of which produce something edible. Yes, the food forest. I think you're referring to the food forest. Okay, I, it's it's hard for me to think of it as a forest, but okay, <laughs> the food forest. I understand <laughs> that was the name it was given. Food forest. All right. <laughs> no singing pine trees. It can't be a forest. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just I can't climb any of the trees. I mean, if they were a little big. <laughs> <laughs> well, the community member, he said that he's he's willing to manage the food forest as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, now, are there any items of new business that have come up since I've sent out the notice? Okay. Nope. Done for me. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right with we me. Are, we are adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, right, everyone. Have a good evening now. Good, good night, night, everyone. everyone.